So welcome everyone. This is seven o'clock and today is Saturday, the 21st of August. I'm pleased to welcome everybody on today's program on the Magnificent Tigers of India. Today we have Vipul Gupta. He is a resident of Nagpur. He is an avid photographer, wildlife photographer. He has been working for the uh, for the best of the tiger, for the benefit of the tigers, save the tigers, and especially he has worked a lot in the development of the villages and the tribals around the Kanya forest region. He is he is actually an, a mechanical engineer and he has his own factory. And he's an industrialist. And in spite of being a very busy businessman, he has taken a lot of time out from his day-to-day -day life and working for nature. Something that we all should learn and in, uh, implement it in our lives. So without much ado, I will now uh, ask uh, Vipul Gupta to introduce himself. And uh, so Vipul, we are welcome to Gyanadam. And uh, we are happy to have you today. If you would like to introduce yourself a little more in detail, and you can begin your presentation by going to presentation mode. Vipul, please start. Yeah. yeah. Hi, good evening, everyone. I hope and pray that everyone is keeping safe. And I thank you, Farooq, my old friend, for relentlessly pursuing me to share the story of my journey with you all. Let me start by introducing myself. My name, as you now know, is Vipul Gupta. And I now divide my time between my two homes, one at Nagpur and one at Kana. I grew up mostly in central India, and I still remember fondly how wildlife and jungles were everywhere. And there seemed such a great balance of everything. Over the last few years, I've been transitioning from being a business entrepreneur to more of a development sector professional. So as you can see, this was my past. Uh, I am a mechanical engineer. I used to work with mining equipment. So I used to work on mining equipment. You can see this large uh, tire there. I used to work on maintaining the brakes of such equipment, uh, travel the world. Uh, it was a different life altogether, uh, a completely professional business life. And uh, over the last few years, I started my transition. And uh, this is what I look like now mostly. And my passion for wildlife and photography uh, kept on taking me to the jungles of not just central India, but all over the country and around the world. I love nature and wildlife and I've been dabbling at wildlife photography for a few years. So before uh, we go ahead into something really serious and thought provoking, let me take you on a short trip around the natural parks in India and some of those in Africa. So this is me in action when I'm out on a safari. This picture, I'll, I'll give you a brief of every picture um, when we are going through. This picture was made in Botswana. Uh, there were about 50 plus elephants would come to this watering hole and there were just two of us, me and my camera. Nothing else between the elephants and us and this water body. It was a magical evening, absolutely. This was uh, shot somewhere in Africa. This was in Uttarakhand last month, full moon night. This was again in Botswana somewhere. Uh, a beautiful sunset, a uh, bunch of elephants. This picture was made in Ranthambore. Ranthambore is arguably one of the most beautiful parks in the country, uh, especially uh, lending itself for tiger photography. The landscape, the colors there, they just work magic when you spot a tiger. And uh, this is again from the same trip. This was a very special trip for me. I spotted about 11 tigers in two days. This is again from Ranthambore. Interesting. Yeah, this was a mother which is trying to teach its cub to behave. This guy was just walking off 
and mother was growling and wanting him to come back. He was not listening, so she jumped up and gave him a slap. This picture was made uh, somewhere in uh, Uttarakhand in the Satal region. This is a region which is known for amazing bird life. Uh, you can spend one day and probably see more than 50 different types of birds. So if any of you is interested in birds, that's the place to head in India. Cheap and cheerful, easy to get and easy sighting. This is in the savannas of Africa. Uh, in the evening glow, the, it, the sky just lights up. It becomes magical there. Uh, this was, I think, in Serengeti, uh, Tanzania. And uh, this lion, this young male lion, they look so beautiful when they are young with the golden mane. This guy just kept walking towards us in the early morning in the mist in the background. I don't think this needs much explanation. This is just a beautiful picture I could make possibly because of the mist. Uh, not actually mist, these are clouds uh, and the sun was setting. So I got the opportunity to do this. This was uh, on a lunar eclipse uh, done at uh, near Sariska National Park. It is actually seven images superimposed um, in one frame and it shows the complete lunar eclipse sequence. This special frame was made in Beda. Beda is about a hundred and odd kilometers away from Udaipur and arguably the best place in the world to see complete uh, harmony between man and animal. Uh, the population of leopards is fantastic. The, the, this is not a national park and people live in that area and once in a while a leopard would take away livestock and people are uh, not really bothered. They say, usko bhi to khana chahiye. This was again in Sattal. This uh, picture was uh, clicked in Ranthambore again. This is that famous tiger T24, which was captured and put, I would say behind bars or actually in a cage uh, because of some allegations, unproven, but probably true of human kills uh, that this tiger had resorted to. This image was made, uh, these are two young sub-adult cubs. Uh, it was made in Tadoba. Tadoba National Park, south of Nagpur is uh, the place to go and see tigers if you're just interested in tigers. The landscape isn't very inspiring, but the sighting of tigers is amazing. This image was made actually using just an iPhone. It's unusual to see a lion climb up a tree. It's not very common. And so I got this opportunity while we were just driving back after a full day safari. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a very special image. This is called star trail photography. It's uh, or astrophotography uh, for most of the people who don't know about it. This is actually a superimposition of about 220 images made at the same spot over a period of three hours or so, dead of the night. As the earth rotates, these spots that you would normally see as stars, when the earth rotates, they form these trails, semicircular trails, which you see in this picture. This was made in Namibia, in the Namib desert. This is a very emotional image for me. It was made in uh, Corbett. As you can see, the mother is nudging the little baby to move ahead. The baby, uh, the rare leg was injured and uh, the mother was continuously taking care and ensuring that the baby walked in front of the mother. 
I call this just a happy image. This guy was almost talking to us. This is a misty morning in the chilly winters of Kana National Park. You get the mist, you get golden light, and it's amazing for photography. This is another misty morning in the forests of Kana. What you see is a pair of Barasingas. Barasinga uh, has been brought back from near extinction in Kana National Park by the efforts of the park authorities. And it is found only in two parks in the country. It's a very special animal. This was again shot in Beda. Uh, I was just fortunate when I was driving back uh, after a whole day of shooting. This guy just popped up. I had a torch in my hand and I thought I'd seen a pair of eyes and there he was. And he sat there, allowed me to make this picture. This image was made uh, from a hide, which was, uh, you know, like an underground bunker somewhere in Africa, where I sat through the night waiting for mammals to come and drink water. I have some pictures of that also, but not in this compilation. And then early morning, I saw these birds come and drink water and splash around. This little cute cub, probably two to three months old, I saw him in Bandhavgarh National Park. Uh, he was one of a litter of three. The mother, uh, unfortunately, uh, due to a territorial fight, uh, which she lost, she lost her life. And one after the other, all the three cubs, they died. So yeah, uh, that was about the pictures. And uh, now let's come to talking about tigers and their ecosystem. Tigers, the most enigmatic of all creatures, continue to draw the attention of people around the world. In India, the tigers been the center stage of all life. You find them in temples, in gods and goddesses, dances, folklores, cultural practices, sculptures, paintings, in fact, everywhere. So that being the case, and knowing for a fact that there were more than 40,000 tigers at the turn of the century in India, why are we all struggling to save tigers from extinction? extinction? And what are really the key issues? Tigers, as you know, uh, they are at the apex of the food chain. In the forest ecosystem, the tiger sits at the top as a tertiary carnivore and a primary predator. The interdependency of living forms in a food chain is obvious, as the wild tiger is dependent on herbivores for its survival, where he maintains their population, which in turn prevents the grasslands from getting overgrazed, the herbivores depend on grasses, herbs, shrubs, and large trees. And they in turn maintain a balance in vegetation by controlling the extent of vegetation. Birds survive on herbs, shrubs, trees, and fruits and nectar, and in turn act as seed dispersal agents and spread the population of the floral elements in an ecosystem. Thus all forms of life in a biosphere, including the tiger, are interlinked with each other in an ecosystem and their survival depends upon how intact the ecosystem is. If you remove the tiger from that, the entire ecosystem will start to fall apart. So what is really disturbing the balance? What is threatening the tigers and the biodiversity? And what are the real causes? The main causes are these. Illegal and legal hunting of tigers and bushmeat, fortress style conservation, Project Tiger is an example of that, linear and infrastructure projects, loss of habitat, human animal conflict, biodiversity issues, especially related to forest dwelling communities. Let's examine each of them one by one. Legal and illegal hunting. Till the 1960s in India, you could actually legally hunt down any animal that you want. 
for joy, for sport, for fun, or for money. And tens of thousands of tigers were killed in this fashion. These are some really disturbing images. Look at this, a shop selling tiger parts. Look at this, so many tiger and leopard skins caught from poachers. Let's look at some statistics. At the turn of the century, maybe more than 40,000 tigers in India alone. In 1960, 2,000 were reported, were actually less than that. Cost of a tiger skin in 1950 was rupees 300 in Delhi markets. And there were over 500 shops selling tiger materials in Delhi. Cost of tiger skin, 2,000 was five lakhs or more. And cost of a tiger skin across the border in China today would be over $100,000. So there is demand. So in the late 60s, when all this happened and you know, the census showed that there is a possibility of tiger going extinct in India, the government of India stepped in and Indira Gandhi announced that there would be a complete ban on tiger hunting as well as tiger trade. Can you imagine hundreds of petitions were filed in the Delhi High Court against this law? Fortunately, the Delhi High Court turned it down at that point of time and uh, tiger hunting was banned, which was a great thing to happen because then the tigers were safe, at least in their own habitats. Nine project tigers were set up initially and they were meant specifically to protect the tigers in their own habitat. And today the count has gone up to almost 50 such project tiger uh, operations in the country. This is what we normally call as the fortress style of conservation, where the national parks have been made involute for all others and seek to protect only the park and its animals inside with very little concern of anything else around the park. But by itself and in terms of protecting the tiger, Project Tiger has been really successful. The numbers have increased. The government of India, the forest department and many NGOs working to conserve the tiger, they've done a wonderful job and credit is due to them. So as you can look here from 2006 to 2019, the population has gone up almost 100%. And Right now, we probably have more than 3,500 tigers out in the wild. Let's talk about the next issue, the linear projects. Linear projects, you know, just like we need our roads and canals and other st stuff, you know, let's say roads to go from one city to the other, animals also need corridors for them to migrate from one area to the other area to remain alive and to thrive. But mining projects, linear projects, such as high tension lines, roads, infrastructure projects, such as dams, canals, break these corridors, which connect the wildlife, and then they become killers of wildlife. Look at these disturbing images. Some of these images, uh, which I'm throwing up are not mine, they've been taken from public domain and credit is due to all the people who have actually taken these images. Look at this. So the tiger is threatened in this fashion also. So while development is very important keyword for us humans, we also need to be sensitive to the needs of preserving the biodiversity. And much to the relief, the thought and planning process for new projects seems to be changing and at least some of the new projects in India are taking into account the mitigation measures which are so desperately needed. A case in point is the National Highway Number 44. Can you imagine this is a road quite close to my house here. It's between Sydney in Madhya Pradesh and Nagpur in uh, Maharashtra. A 37 kilometer road which has five 
uh, underpasses, long underpasses, and about four un smaller bridges, a 37 kilometer stretch passing through thick forest allows the traffic to get through, but look at this. It also allows the wildlife to get through. So this is the need of the R and again, credit to the authorities, credit to the NGOs, credit to people who have been you know, shouting and fighting for such things. And here we see a success story. But as I told you, increasing tiger population has its own challenges. As the habitat shrinks and the human population increases, the habitats start to become like islands. Look at these pictures. This is a Google image of Kana National Park, Google Earth image, right? How green it looks. I zoom out a little bit. You start to see the browns. These are the fields or the villages. You start to see the roads. I zoom out a little more. Kana Tiger Reserve now looks like a tiny island surrounded by brown patches, roads cutting through, farmland, villages, and towns. Yeah, what happens then? Every male tiger needs at least a hundred square kilometer of territory for surviving, within which it might allow about two to three females to live in its territory. But if tigers keep on increasing in this fashion and the parks become islands, the way you see that on the screen right now, what will happen? They start fighting amongst themselves. Some get killed, the others have to move out. When they start to move out, they don't find corridors. Corridors have been taken away. Then what happens is what we call the man-animal conflict. A pregnant tigress in Maharashtra choked to death, paws chopped. Tiger kills one in Chandrapur, toll now 25. Tiger kills woman in Chandrapur. This conflict is severe. And this happens because of increasing population of human beings, more demand for agriculture, grazing pastures, wood, and other forest products. Loss of habitat, people walking into forests, broken corridors, decreased prey base, bush hunting, easy access to domestic animals for food, all these result in man-animal conflict. Have you, any of you seen the new Vidya Balan show um, movie, Share Me? It truly captures this aspect of the situation. So the question is not whom to blame, but what can be done to address these issues? So while there are several NGOs, the forest department and the laws that address and help with the fortress style of conservation, it does have, it has its own advantages. There's no doubt about it. But the issue of man and animal conflict mitigation largely remains unaddressed, except for compensation that they can get from the government when uh, they, their cattle are taken down or a person dies or something like that. Look at this, poaching. Probably the trap was for bushmeat. Look at this. A tiger was electrocuted by the villagers. So when the parks were made and made involute, the forest dwelling communities had to move out. Some of these communities had no knowledge of the outside world, did not know the basic farming techniques even and found themselves completely at loss. Their original lands were taken away with often uncultivable small patches given to them with little or no water source. There was no upskilling done. There was no livelihood guarantee of any kind. For hundreds of years, these people survived on forests for their livelihood, taking what they needed and protecting the forests all along, along with the animals. Their food, their medicines, their livelihood, everything came from the forests. If these communities were the original protectors of the forests for centuries, suddenly they were declared villains. They were not allowed to get in 
They were not allowed to play a role to keep the forests pristine. And that is where this real conflict started. Their education level is extremely poor. Their income levels extremely, extremely low. And issues like these have forced the forest dwelling communities to resort to illegal hunting, tree felling, petty crime, falling prey to Naxalite movements, and also migrating to cities where they get terribly exploited. So while the government made the laws to protect the forest and the forest departments did their jobs, foundations and NGOs, they aggressively work for protecting the tigers. There weren't many people who were addressing the cause of these special people, the forest dwelling communities who were displaced from their own lands. It was with this view that I established Earth Focus Foundation. The vision of which is to shape a Kana landscape where people and nature thrive together. We work in and around the Kana National Park. Earth Focus Kana was born out of a belief that empowering tribal communities is the key to Kana's conservation in the long run. We work with the forest dwelling communities so that they can live with dignity and harmony with nature. Our mission is to empower forest dwelling communities through contextual education and nature-based livelihoods. This is like a training session for the community mobilizers at our office in near the Mukki gate of Kana National Park. Our education interventions, even though the schools have not been opened for the last one and a half years, we've gone into the communities and our people continue to work with the children in their homes uh, or what we call as learning hubs. Another picture of the same thing. Introducing agroforestry so that and, and that too at uh, this level, you know, involving the children so that they learn what is good for them in the long run in, for the biodiversity. This was a bamboo plantation exercise done just a few days back. Uh, women empowerment is a key also that we, you know, we take a lot of pride uh, in the fact that we involve women folk first before we even talk to the men there in the villages and try to involve them in all the decision making that they have to do for themselves. So our journey is long, uh, it's difficult, but we've dedicated ourselves to this task and believe that with the right inputs over a sustained period of time, we will see the Kana landscape that God really had created originally and uh, play our role in that. And if this has sparked any curiosity inside of you to know more, please contact us. If this has sparked a desire to help and support our work at Earth Focus, please come forward. And if any of you wishes to come to Kana and enjoy the pristine forest, see tigers up close, and also maybe interact with our team and see the work that we are doing, please feel free to contact us. One day you'll wake up and you won't have time to do the things that you've always wanted to do. Do it now. Yeah, thank you everyone. And now I'm open to any questions or anything else that you people may want to know about. Hello there. Yeah, hi. Hi, I have a few questions. Yes, please. If if you don't mind, can you give us a little more in terms of technical details of photography? I mean, you have spanned uh, quite a bit from uh, birds to animals to astrophotography, and it would be helpful if you could uh, give us a little more technical details to what cameras are you using, you know, what shutter speeds are you using, what filters you are using. Uh, that would be very, be very useful and helpful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was once at a party where, uh, you know, somebody uh, said to the host, uh, uh, this dish is absolutely delicious. Which oven do you use? 
<laughs> so yeah photography is uh, not really much about equipment uh, although i'll tell you what i use photography is about uh, especially nature photography and when it comes to wildlife photography is learning about the behavioral aspects of the animals about the habitat and a lot of patience a lot of patience you can uh, i mean i i consider myself lucky if i make one good picture in a full day of roaming around in a forest i may shoot 100 but if i get one good picture which depicts a, a, an animal's behavior or the habitat and you know uh, um, if it's seen at ease in its surrounding that's what you want to capture I prefer to use Nikon cam equipment. I have uh, three bodies, uh, two full frame, one. Um, uh, so, uh, and, and a host of lenses actually, uh, depending upon what I'm shooting, where I'm shooting, uh, right from Astro onwards to uh, where I have a wide angle lens to a telephoto lens, 400 prime. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm, I'm self-taught, really. I haven't uh, gone through any course or anybody else teaching me. It, uh, it, it, the practice teaches you. Uh -oh. Thank you very much. Vipul, what has been your wait time? I mean, what are the longest that you've waited in a location? Okay, now the animal would come, it'll come for watering or it'll come for feeding. Oh, uh, the longest wait was at a hide in South Africa. I got in at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, came out next morning at about 7 o'clock. <laughs> uh, couldn't yeah. use the loo, couldn't eat anything except take sips of water. And throughout the night, I was sitting there with my camera. And uh, is it that you work alone? I can see that you're not a part of a, a, a photography group that goes out. I, mean, I can see that you're a loner there. Am I, am I right? Yeah, sort of. I have a uh, bunch of buddies who, who uh, I mean, we join up together to have more fun after the day is done. Yes. But I prefer to shoot alone. Okay. And uh, uh, what you are saying, one out of 100 is a success rate, which is great. I mean, you'll be very happy if that happens. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Sometimes you're more lucky, sometimes not at all. Mm. And uh, what is the point where uh, in your... Um, outings you found that you were in real danger the animal was very close to you or you were attacked by some other animal or you were so hungry or something you're ill or whatever yeah uh, let's get one thing straight um, an animal will attack only when it's threatened or right. when it considers something as food mm. so let's say uh, um, you encounter a tiger and it's up close also. If you're not disturbing it uh, and it doesn't feel threatened, it certainly knows that you're not food. It won't do anything to you. Mm -hmm. So they are aware that you're uh, there. You're there's somebody out. Uh, you know, outside. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Especially inside the parks because they've been born and br brought up in these parks where they see people come and go. Mm -hmm. You know. The, it, it to them can you imagine thinking oh, what a tiger must be thinking oh here comes another gypsy now they're going <laughs> to stop they're going yeah. to do click 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 they're yeah. going to say tiger 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 and then yeah. they're going to drive off yeah right okay so we have some people who want to who have raised their hand i have uh, tejaswini uh, again uh, my classmate too who wants to who has raised her hand would you like to say something tejaswini Tejaswini, I have allowed you to put your mic on. Can you put your mic on and speak, Tejaswini? Okay. Uh, so till then, uh, we have another person, Kirtin Kumar, who has uh, who has requested to speak. So Satish Khot also wants to say something. So please put on your mics. I am allowing everybody to talk who has raised their hands. Vipul, uh, till then, just one small question is, you don't shoot video, right? This is only stills. Uh, mostly stills. Yeah. Okay. I I'm stunned. I mean, I'm absolutely stunned. I've never seen photography like yours. This is just amazing. And, uh, <laughs> and in, a, in a daily, we sp spend about 150, 200 photographs, 400 photographs. We keep looking at it. Na? Chalta hi rata hai. But uh, your photography just left me absolutely stunned. This is amazing.
Okay. Please go ahead. Yeah. Nargish D'Souza. Uh, yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I would like to know in 2019, 2,900 approximately was the census of the tigers. If there was no poaching altogether, what do you think the uh, count of the tigers would be in 2021? Uh, look, poaching is not the only reason which uh, tigers die off. So, uh, as I told to you, uh, explained to you, linear projects, road kills, uh, uh, of man animal conflict, everything, uh, you know, basically. I would say uh, limits the tiger growth, uh, tiger population growth. So uh, if you want to say that if these things had not happened, what would be the population of tigers? Or what would, uh, other way around, let's say if these things were ideal and the corridors were there and all the parks in India which could possibly sustain tigers uh, had tigers, then probably India has the potential to be home to a population of about 10,000 tigers. That is what okay. the experts say. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes, of course. Farooq, shall I speak? Yeah, yeah, please, please. Uh, people, I'm Satish Khot. I'm very much into environment protection, etc. I've been fighting for that in uh, Pune. But I have been to run Thambur and early, early morning I've gone, no luck. Again the next day, early, early morning I've gone, no luck at all. I haven't seen a tiger. Uh, a year and a half back, just before the lockdown, I'd gone to Pana. Pana. Pana has a deputation of building from zero down to 50 foot tigers in there. Yes. And, and the person who did it was uh, become a friend of mine and he had organized for us to go. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. But guess how many tigers I saw? Zero. Well, I know it is just luck. It happens and it doesn't happen like that. So, Kana, what would be the best time to come? Uh, look for tiger sighting anywhere in the country. The best time is the peak summer time because the uh, you know the bushes are down, the grass is down, uh, it's all uh, it's not so green. The few watering holes that there are, the tigers will come up to the watering holes. Uh, and how do, is it possible to book things for uh, at Prokana? How do MP, you book? Yeah, yeah, it's online booking, sir. MP online. MP online. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Almost Hopefully. all the parks in the country now, all the bookings are done online. Thank you very much. What I would like to do, I would like to come to Kana. Hopefully, keeping our fingers crossed that next summer things will be better and we'll be able to travel. I would like to go there. And even if I don't get photographed, but I sight a tiger, my heart will be in the right place. Okay. Thank you. And You're all the very best for you, April. Thank you. I would like now uh, Mustafa to ask a question. Mustafa? Yeah, uh, I had that question, but it has already been asked about what is the best time to visit a sanctuary and it has already been answered. So I've lowered my hand. Thank you very much, Vipul. Excellent presentation. Thank you, sir. But I, I, I want to add one thing more here. The best time to do anything, if it wasn't yesterday, then it is today. <laughs> nice way to put it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Sandeep, would you like to add something? You have been putting something on the chat box. Would you like to add something? Yes. Uh, I, I am uh, connecting to my screen. Uh, can't hear you. You can't hear you. Uh, no. I think your camera should, your mic should be near your, uh, your mouth. No, no, it, it is. Now you yeah. can hear me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think all I'm uh, going to say is I'm intrigued because uh, a long time ago when I was in India, I oh. spent quite a bit of time. Uh, my uh, my mama's side are all from Nagpur, Akola, Amravati. And I had a chance to go to a coal cast project near Amravati and spent uh, a considerable time there because uh, one of my engineering college friends, father was the chief, chief conservator of forest. And that allowed me to... Uh, uh, 
to to see this wildlife except uh, you know we were middle class people and i didn't have a camera probably i had one of those old simple cameras and you you really worried a lot about how many pictures you were taking and uh, i see your wonderful pictures they are that exceedingly beautiful uh, national geographic quality so i'm thoroughly impressed at 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 the at the uh, amazing pictures you have taken you know hats off to you uh, i just uh, uh, i i just feel like uh, you know i was thinking in the back of my mind what could you do maybe literally go from town to town uh, physically in in every city village town in india do little shows and communicate that on a personal level uh, i know there is there is uh, you know virus and all but a stage will come maybe next year do you think that's in that's in, in your itinerary future itinerary to go literally from town to town and educate people from ground up thank you so much for the wonderful suggestion i will surely consider it i was toying with the idea but now having heard it from someone else i think uh, it's worth the trouble and i will look at doing what uh, can be done in this fashion as of now i spend a lot of time on the ground working with the people there the locals there and it will be a pleasure to have you sandeep uh, visit us sometime and see what we are trying to do i'm i'm trying hard to get to nagpur uh, if virus was not there i would have been there so uh, we have uh, uh, freddy uh, freddy do you wish to speak yeah can you hear me freddy uh, i'll introduce you to freddy he is uh, one of our main uh, honorary photographers of gyanadha you know he is a avid photographer and industrialist freddy please speak to vipul yeah hi vipul can you hear me yeah yeah, yeah. acha uh regarding a few things that were discussed by you and uh, the questions asked by a few of the people before this somebody asked about the cameras that are normally used for uh, the option i can instead of that is the problem now please keep quiet can you no, unmute mode ke chelu to ha no unmute hello yeah ha ah, so the most famous camera today in the market or uh, preferred by all wildlife photographers is a nikon d500 with a 200 500 lens that is the most popular at the moment it's popular not the most desirable no not the a fixed lens is always much better than the rest that is for sure but this is what is you know within reach of quite a few people yeah you right yeah so so that, that that's why it's more popular people have shifted from canon to nikon because of this reason and uh, secondly i have been to taroba i have been to paints quite a few times and sighting was almost in all the trips that i've been there and good sighting i don't know whether you are uh, in favor of these uh, centuries or not because you spoke more only about kana that's why i'm asking you this you know i i spoke about kana where my work takes me uh, okay because i couldn't possibly start my work everywhere uh, kana is very close to my heart i've been going there for the last 40 plus years okay 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 uh, but i go to all the other parks yeah but what was really your question i mean uh, just wanted to know what you wanted to ask me uh it nahi that satish said that she had we had been to quite a few places and didn't find a single tiger but don't ever had... go with satish no 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 <laughs> not at all <laughs> <laughs> no we go on we are a group of photo three of us a group of photographers <laughs> we go on. we we go to uh, uh, taroba and paints quite often almost every year last year we didn't do it because of the pandemic yeah even i would i suppose we are planning a visit even maybe next month or month later than this so we'll be going there again but for every uh, expedition that i went i found tigers and found them at very close quarters yeah so it is not that you don't see them you do see them and you see them for fight sometime not that a passing shot or something of that sort okay uh, so that is what i would like to say if people who are interested to go they can go there and have a look i would now request karnan sundarajan if he wants to say something uh, thank karnan you karnan can unmute you. thank you for uh, please unmute yourself karnan i have unmuted can you hear me yeah 
Thank you, Vipul. I think uh, it's a very enlightening, very educative, and uh, very illustrious presentation you have given us. You know, uh, I'm a great uh, fan of uh, people who love animals. Can you speak a little loudly, Karna? I I said I'm a I'm a great fan of. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm a great fan of people who love nature and. Uh, Vipul, I think I have uh, a couple of observations, no questions actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would like you to mention something about Bandavgarh. You know, I spent a lot of time in Bandavgarh mm -hmm. in Madhya Pradesh and uh, it was very difficult to sight a tiger like you mentioned, you know. So I sympathize with people who have not seen tigers and I uh, empathize with you for spending so much time to catch a tiger and uh, uh, it's very very enlightening and your photographs are simply awesome what you use what you don't use is is different but I, I think i've never seen such a lovely presentation i i have a lot of people who post a lot of photographs to me because i love uh, nature and it's it, it, you know i must thank profusely i must thank uh, farooq uh, you know for having thought of uh, uh, me and thought of many people like me and Thanks to you, Vipul, for uh, a lovely, 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 impeccable presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. So when it comes to Bandavgarh, I'll just give you a little thing about Bandh Bandhavgarh. Is uh, uh, you know, it's a beautiful forest. It's got a fort inside the forest. It's got temples from an era where uh, you know, it's got a Vishnu idol on, lying on its back in the middle of the forest. Uh, it's a place that you would really want to go. But when you Talk about sightings in Bandhavgarh. Bandhavgarh probably again ranks as high as Tarhuba in terms of tiger sightings. And uh, as you exit the park, uh, you know, there's a board which says, don't worry if you haven't spotted a tiger. At least six, eight tigers must have spotted you. <laughs> Very nice one. Yeah. Hey, by the way. But we spotted uh... a tiger finally, but uh, my camera was not ready for it, you know, unfortunately. And I got only the uh, exit portion of it across the road. So I was very upset because, in fact, I was less upset compared to the others because others didn't even get to do that. <laughs> so thank you so much. Uni Krishnan wanted to, he has raised his hand. Uni Krishnan, would you like uh, to unmute yourself you, and talk? Yeah. All right. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, good morning, Mr. Vipul, and uh, thanks to Gyan Adab. Uh, been waiting for this for the last one week or so. And uh, I'm a true blue Malayali, and today happens to be Onam. But uh, you, Onam, I, sir. thank you so much, Mr. Vipul. And I want, didn't want to miss this, and uh, just wanted to say that uh, it's been absolutely enlightening and marvelous. And just reminded me of my uh, motorcycle correction, uh, my cycle ride from Jabalpur, where I was doing a course all the way to Kana in 1997. Oh, wow. And, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and uh, another thing I uh, wanted to, I mean, which I'm trying to inculcate uh, to my son is, uh, in fact, I started out I with William Blake's, uh, particular, oh, William Blake's famous poem. Hmm? And oh. I don't know how many of these people out here were chatting incessantly, which has been a real irritation. I would request uh, Mr. Farooq, at least next time, we should ensure that pe only people who are interested should be able to chat. Yeah, uh, so, so actually, actually, <clears throat> uh, there is a setting in the Zoom webinar. All right. Which I have realized I should have done, which I didn't do. But once the program starts, I don't like to go back and change any setting. I, I, I might disturb what's going on. Because here and we I are. Realized are today. Yes, Mr. Yeah, Farooq. Yeah. In, fact, in fact, like I said, I've been. You know, every been, time you learn something new. <laughs> absolutely, Mr. Farooq. And, and thanks yeah, to my yeah. profession, I have been in places where I've been in touch with wildlife. Uh, my last tiger sighting was, of course, quite a long time back. But uh, I, I am really uh, enthused and I'm so happy that I could hear this. Uh, your photograph, photographs are absolutely out of the world, especially the one, uh, I think it was it the Masai Mara or in the Serengeti, the, the lion on the, on the, on the tree. Yeah. That was uh, something else. Uh, just one little thing which I wanted to ask you was that... Uh, I've been reading up on stuff, I mean, ever since I've been uh, walking, uh, especially with regard to wildlife. So AJT John Singh's book, which I just yeah. read about a month back, yeah. uh, talking about it, the book is uh, Walking the Western Guards. It's a seminal yeah. work. Uh, I recommend Absolutely. this to people. Yeah. People who you must read it if you're part of this nation and if you love this country, I mean, at least this wildlife 
this is an amazing book what what i wanted to ask you mr vipul was just this that uh, uh, the issue he, he mentions that after uh, uh, karnataka i mean after uh, madhe not even madhe much before that uh, from that side onwards to na- north uh, maharashtra and beyond um, there is hardly any tigers in the western ghats i mean he he talks about it and uh, in fact i checked out with a, a friend of mine who is also a photographer so he he this book was written some time back but uh, uh, it he says it's still a fact like i have been here all around <laughs> radhanagari <laughs> and uh, uh, radhanagari for example and uh, amboli etc that but because of probably because of corridor break uh, he says and also for the fact he says that the the, the forest department isn't very proactive the way it should be in uh, say in karnataka and kerala tamil nadu etc so i don't know if you could say put in uh, enlighten us on that uh, let's not uh, put the blame on a department or uh, you know a set of people uh, the fact still remains that tiger dispersion uh, was practically all over this country at one point of time around the turn of the century and today it thrives only in some pockets uh, it also is a fact that wherever tiger has vanished completely from it's been very difficult to bring back the tiger in that ecosystem and th- there are several reasons as i mentioned earlier on in the presentation you know lack of corridors the prey base the habitat uh, how it is surrounded by human population linear projects everything has a role to play so uh, there have been cases where tigers have walked 350 kilometers plus to find food water and a mate uh, but that's nature uh, think about western ghats is that the prey base just isn't there the tiger specifically needs herbivores which needs grasslands the western ghats are hilly areas uh predators such as leopards thrive better in some, uh, such conditions so uh, right uh, right uh, right mr vipul and uh, probably uh, i think you've given your number in this i won't bother you much but probably uh, maybe next time when i plan a ride or something towards kana i might uh, you know look you up it be an it be an honor absolutely. to me absolutely it will be an honor and a pleasure sir thank you so much sir thank you uh, you can always contact janadha my number is there i have put it in the in the creatives which i sent you for the invitation my phone number is there in each of them so you can just send me a whatsapp message i'll connect you to vipul immediately roger sir roger there thank is you this mr Mr. dr barucha who wants to talk and i think twice uh, he asked for uh, one minute one minute i'll just i'll just give him permission to uh, one minute dr barucha kya yeah. yeah dr barucha Yeah, Barucha. Bar- no, there is no Barucha. What is his first name? It just says Doctor Barucha. I can oh, yeah, yeah, see the question and answers. Yeah, I, I will. I uh, please uh, unmute yourself, Barucha sir, Doctor Barucha. Hi, good evening to you. We put uh, pictures. I'm a wildlife photographer for last fifty five years. Oh wow. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so but I, what was nice about your presentation was though you called it magnificence of tigers uh, you brought in other species as well and uh, it's becoming an increasing concern for old time wildlifers uh, that uh, you get more and more tourists the pressures of tourism are increasing now and it is a bit of a problem and one would like to see people understand the habitat understand the needs of wildlife and biodiversity and look at much more broader implications than oh i've got 20 pictures of a tiger so uh, this is something that your presentation did bring in a bit and uh, thank you for that thank you very much sir can i ask one question vipul yeah please quote what are your future plans for the tiger i know you are a leader in that area in your part under earthfocus.org what is the purpose of earthfocus and what are your plans in the future for the tigers and for the habitat staying next to the village what are your future projects look as i mentioned earlier on i believe that uh, you know tiger by itself doesn't survive uh, there has to be a habitat a complete biodiversity uh, ecosystem in place so in the long run unless you make the communities 
the forest dwelling communities which were ousted from these forests a part of the conservation program things like poaching things like electrocution things like uh, illegal hunting felling of trees uh, running into trouble with the authorities uh, more need for, of land for agriculture you know these things can't be checked unless the communities are involved and that is where earth focus comes in earth focus is not a fortress style conservation organization earth focus works for the communities and with the communities to educate them uh, about biodiversity to help them uplift their livelihood income levels but basically still depending upon whatever locally can be produced and consumed so how many people are around you who are helping you as volunteers as paid people what is it earth focus and how you get your work done okay earth focus was started under 2 years ago actually uh, when the lockdown happened yeah. just before the lockdown happened. so uh, it's it's a, a small baby i would say and we have 10 full time employees and a few uh, mobilizers from the villages already working with us and uh, we intend to uh, continue to build this organization uh, organically but uh, idea being uh, you know train and work with the local people it is difficult it is time consuming but that's what we intend to do hey farooq so as of now uh, we have uh, we our engagement is with about 5500 individuals 1200 oh. children uh, oh. yeah we we go out and uh, work on education intervention with almost 1200 children on a daily basis wow yeah and then do you take the yeah yeah please please, please. rishi rishima is waiting to uh, to speak rishima okay let me get her into a place rishima Ri rishima acharya right yeah uh, rishima please unmute yourself and uh, please speak uh hello i hope uh, you can hear my voice my name is rahul acharya and i am rishma's father okay. uh, am, I, am i audible clearly yes yes uh thank you so uh, mr vipul thanks for this fantastic presentation and um, uh, i'm not an exception fantastic photographs uh, i requested you to if it is possible if you can replay those uh, photographs is uh, first request everyone is appreciating that and <laughs> Seeing those, <laughs> I also want to. Seeing those, can you play this? Yeah, me too. Okay. Absolutely. Let's have those photographs again. Let's have again. a question, sir. Uh, sorry. Uh, I would like to see the photographs once again, uh, and even you play it for more than once. That is also also okay with us. Uh, but um, the question is, uh, many people uh, raised a point here that uh, they visited Kana, they visited Ranathambore, and they couldn't uh, sight tigers. um my problem was also same um i have visited at least uh, three or four national parks in india a uh, couple of times and uh, i'm not as lucky as you are and i am really um uh, trying to see if uh, i can get a uh, uh, proper guidance where i can go to some of the national parks where we can sight the tigers and all uh finally i thought that um if not in india outside india probably i will get an opportunity to see a tiger uh but i i could see a problem there like um uh, there are zones and some zones where tigers are in in the national parks and some zones where the tigers are sighted quite uh, frequently and some zones are uh, the place where uh, they are not sighted at all like in uh, jim corbett sitawani is the zone i visited twice and i was not able to uh, see a single tiger so do you have any specific a uh, point on uh, uh, this also that how we can go when we can go and which zone we should visit so that we can see a tiger okay uh, while uh, i'm not uh, and i'm i'm a straight forward person uh, just as uh, you know dr uh, uh, barucha had mentioned uh, a few minutes ago let's not be very tiger focused but i do understand that people who have not seen a tiger Uh, for them uh, you can't take it out of their heads unless they've done that so uh, let's put it straight two summer months go to ranthambore or tadoba national park do at least three to four safaris and you will certainly get tigers 
but can we can we connect with you you have given your email id can we connect yes, with please. you and try anytime. to anytime please okay for, thank for you for anything related to before we see the slide show we put my my very close classmate arun thomas wants to speak to you arun would you like to say something yes can you hear me please yeah yes, yeah sir. Ah, uh, Vipul, uh, thank you for a wonderful presentation and fantastic photography. I'd like to share our experience. Uh, we, as a family, had gone to Kana about twenty, twenty-five years back, and uh, we were staying inside Kana. And as soon as we were checked in, you know, these guides came saying that would you like to go with us in the morning? So we fixed up with one of them. Early morning, they came in their jeep and uh, took us. and we went round and round of course we didn't see any tiger but these people the guides were in touch with someone over a walkie talkie those days there were no mobile they were in touch over the walkie talkie and they used to get some instructions and they say no no the tiger has been sighted somewhere and they used to take us there and nothing would be there then they say no no we have got another sighting and they would take us there and again nothing over there in the way we used to see small animals but not, not the tiger Finally, after about two, two and a half hours, they said, "Yes, now we have a sighting," and they took us there. And conveniently, very, very conveniently, there was an elephant standing over there. And they said, "You have to get onto the elephant." And they took us about twenty-five or thirty meters on the elephant. And there, there were two drugged. They looked drugged uh, tigers lying around there. And they said, "There's your tiger." And so it was quite a sad experience. but is that common with other visitors too i'll tell you a few things here one is that you have been one of those few fortunate people to have stayed inside the park okay uh, the use of walkie talkies was prevalent is prevalent even today mobile okay. phones are not allowed the walkie talkies are used by the forest people only okay uh, the information that these people at that point of time i'm talking about that point because i've also been going to kana since those days okay uh, was almost always correct if somebody had spotted a tiger movement uh, or seen pug marks or seen any other tail tail signs it would be conveyed to the rest of the forest people over the walkie talkie and everybody could listen to okay This doesn't mean that the tiger is going to wait for us to arrive the tiger is usually a shy animal keeps moving unless what you call it's drugged now it's not drugged it's it, it was probably overfed okay once a tiger has had its fill it will normally lay around not too far from the carcass for some time and that's okay. where you spotted it the so called elephant show that you have witnessed and we've all seen so many times has been discontinued now in across all the parks in the country you okay. can go on an elephant back to watch a tiger there are elephant joy rides available and you have to be extremely lucky to spot a tiger from that because they go around a regular beaten track okay right okay. thank you okay. Okay. now Vipul, there uh, is yeah please sandeep now there is a question by chinmay online what can a common man do to save a tiger oh, wow. what <laughs> can a common man do to save a tiger Uh, there are many things that we can all do to save tigers. Uh, we can, uh, let's say, one is tourism. Tourism uh, helps bring money and livelihood to the people who are involved in conserving the tigers, protecting the tigers. Uh, it raises the awareness. You know, you take a picture and you show it to friends and put it on social media. It raises the awareness and it raises the dialogue that happens. uh which helps again bring attention to the cause of saving tigers uh you can be involved with ngos uh, which are in uh, you know working towards tiger conservation or other programs like ours which are not directly related to tiger conservation but going in a circuitous fashion to ensure that the tigers are conserved uh so yeah lots of ways to do it really step out of your comfort zone and there's a lot of things that you can be involved with Okay, uh, so uh, uh, Vipul, I think we have finished. Uh, I would like you to quickly go through your presentation and show your photographs again, and then uh, I would like to make the concluding remarks and end the program. Sure.
Start from the first foot to the That's the best one. The eyes one, yeah. That that is so brilliant. Going to presentation mode. How far did you take this photograph from Vipul? I've cropped it. It wasn't shot that close. You can understand that. But you can see the clarity of the eyes. They're scary, man. Yeah, he wasn't too far from me. Wow. Right. Yeah, this is what we call as a head-on shot. Wow. Okay, jump. Okay, I'll go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, please, please do. Pictures now. Yeah. I'll not go around explaining all of them again. I'll just... No, no, no. You can just... Yeah, yeah. Just short comments. No, hey, Vipul, I, I, while you... what I said, I'll skip comments so that you can absorb the picture more. So while, so this is, people, this are, this while one people are... This is the reflection in the water. Pardon me? The reflection in the water. People, yeah, yeah, there's reflection in the water. These, this is the water body across from where I was shooting. This is in India? No, this was in uh, Botswana. Botswana. Go to the next picture. Yeah. Wow. This is okay. Hey, while you are showing the pictures, one a lady or maybe kids, Aujana is asking, like Sanctuary Asia magazine has kids for Tiger program. Do you have organized such programs for school students? Yes. She is a point. She is a point teacher. Yes, uh, we. Uh, I'm associated with a publication called Save Us. S A E V U S. You can check us out on uh, Instagram or Facebook or uh, online. And uh, we conduct uh, quiz sessions and uh, eco quizzes across the country for children. Some interesting stuff is coming up. Please check that out. If you need more information, send me an email. Another lady, Tulsi, is asking how many tigers were approximately killed? Nobody has a count, sir. At the turn of the century, there were more than 40,000. Today, there are 3,000. So, you know, you can take your guess. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was a wonderful sequence. Actually, I have a full sequence. Some other day, I'll share it with you guys. Lovely. <coughs> wow. This is, sure. this is beautiful. Yeah, and uh, most of my pictures are not heavily edited or processed. They're mostly as short. Wow. Um, other gentle folks are asking if you would mind putting your number in the chat box. I would suggest that uh, Sandeep, if they can note down my number, which is there, in all okay. the invites that I made, because I would like to see that you know people get messages through me. Otherwise, you know he'll be flooded with. <laughs> sure, sure. Also, while you, we are seeing the pictures, did you encounter any scary situations? <laughs> Where you, where you where you felt threatened? No, never. Wow. Because I'm at ease when I'm in the parts. Uh, you're so part I, of I the... You see, when, if you feel scared, you your body emits, uh, you know, whatever stuff it could be called, which will signal to the animal that you are alarmed and which will alarm the animal also. If you are relaxed, the animal will be relaxed. Don't very answer. correct, very don't correct. Move. I've been don't told move. that. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Be calm. Uh, so where was this picture taken? This the was taken in, the, in Namibia, sir. Namibia has the darkest skies on planet Earth amongst all countries. If you want to do astrophotography, there's no place like Namibia. Oh, that's great, great, great one. The only country where the desert meets the sea. Yes, the desert meets the sea It's and the highest sand dunes the oldest desert 
and the cold atlantic sea ocean is beautiful there are, in namibia there are paintings which are nearly 7000 years old yeah this is also a happy picture this is the happy picture so tall Vipul, I just want to uh, let you know, I don't want to start religious wars here, but I am from the religion called Nikon. So uh -huh. if anybody wants to take up uh, religious wars uh, uh, with Nikon versus Canon, I am with you. <laughs> <laughs> Nikon versus Canon. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the wars can be legendary. Huh? Are you hinting at me? Freddy, Freddy is upset. Are you hinting at me? <laughs> By the way, uh, when I was in Kolkas near Amaravati, I remember seeing uh, uh, a, a place where it said, if you want to shoot, shoot with your camera, not with your rifle. Very, very true. That's the right thing to do. Okay, uh, I think... Uh, we... uh, uh, may I come in here? Who is there? Uh, Dr. Dr. Yerich Karucha. Uh, tell me, sir. Uh, Vipulji, I think we have to start encouraging these growing numbers of tourists and going into, you know, the smaller areas, the smaller protected areas, wetlands, grasslands, so that this pressure of tourism now, which is becoming uh, very serious, and uh, there's a lot of change in animal behavior that is occurring, which hasn't been sufficiently documented. So people like you need to do this. You're all young and still able to do this. I may not be able to do that anymore. Incidentally, I've done 111 protected areas in India. Oh my God. Wow. Record holder, sir. Which is why we want people to go to these other smaller places. Yeah, it is beginning to happen. We can see it yeah. happen, but still the, you know, the um, tiger focus tourism. Is yes, I mean, it happens to me also after so many years. So I can't blame anybody for that. It's very exciting to see tigers. But we need to do something about the growing pressures on tiger protected area. So, um, uh, Vipul, I think today we have had a wonderful program. We are now there for more than uh, uh, you know uh, uh, more than an hour, fifteen minutes. And uh, I think Dr. Barucha has been in Ganadar sometime. I remember many, many, many times. Many, in many fact, times. in fact, I've had a show of uh, on Ganadar about on. Uh, the tribal photography that I have done, I have done two books on tribals, which you all released. Because uh, uh, this, uh, we also have uh, three volumes on wildlife in India. Mm. Oh, we, so we should get Dr. Barucha once on the program <laughs> as part of our <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you are welcome. You are welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Barucha ji. And uh, you know, if you can put your phone number in the chat, it will be good for us to contact you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, if with the permission of all the panelists, I would like to uh, thank Vipul ji for a wonderful program on behalf of Gyanadam. And uh, the thing is that, you know, Vipul, with this small program that we have of more than 140 people, this is going to go on YouTube where you can, in our own way, uh, we will be. Uh, uh, we will be spreading the word. The number, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, Please unmute yourself, uh, Vipul. Uh, please unmute yourself. Uh, so, Vipul, huh? so, Vipul, thank you very much. This message of nature and balance of humans with the the co the, di the diversity and the, the co uh, 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 what word we had used, you know, Vipul, that the humans and the animals have to live together. Yes. And uh, this is something that for people like us who only sit stay in the cities or who go for vacation only to very you know, very calculated areas. I would, I would promise you that I'll come to Ghana and visit you and uh, spend some time with you in the in the place which is your backyard. Most Yeah. So, Baruch, so Baruch, when are, do we go there? I'm, I'm <laughs> game. Four of us will go. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah, we'll go. Yeah. So, so Sandi, some parting words would you like to make so that we can end the program, Sandi? No, I think uh, I just wanted to point out uh, we had a lot of uh, chat uh, happening that was irrelevant. Yeah, I I'm sorry. We, 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 no, no, no. One thing. Uh, I think there is a way to uh, turn these people around and, and really say, hey, just hang in here for a few minutes and you will yourself will learn because 
these are the people who are coming on chat box who don't have a direction in life. And it is part of Gyan Adab that we turn them around and say, hey, this is in your interest. This is your future that these tigers survive. And we need to bring them in, cajole them in, and, and take that approach of, of, of educating them. I just want to thank Vipul. You know, this is, this is the type of wholesome programming that Ad Gyan Adab is uh, bringing uh, uh, through Ganpedia. And I think we need to encourage more such people I'm already thinking at least 10 or 20 people who I could bring in from various branches of, of uh, uh, and different areas that could really bring the wholesomeness and, and true understanding. <laughs> After all, this is, this is about human survival of human species. And this is very important. So hats off to you, uh, Vipul. Yeah, that uh, uh, he has, he says, yeah. if we can download, you know, otherwise the Who's investor speaking? only might have. Who's speaking? I'm sorry, somebody just comes in and then speaks. I'm unable to understand. It's difficult to control 140 people, even on a webinar. Anyway, so Kusum Bukan says that my husband had seen tigers in the jungles of Bang Dubi near Silugu, Siliguri, West Bengal, when he used to work as civil engineer to construct blocks for MES. Sometimes the tiger would be sitting across the road and he had to divert his, uh, he, maybe he don't want to take another route. Anyway, so I think there are many people who have got their memories back and thank you very much, Vipul. So with the permission of Vipul, would like anything to say or- uh, Thank you, Gyanada. Thank you, Farooq. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, thank you, Purva. Uh, it's been wonderful interacting with uh, your people here. Uh, it's a wonderful platform, and I hope to attend many more such sessions in the future. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank thank you, you. Bye. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye, bye, everybody. Thank you. I'm keeping the session on for a few seconds if you want to write your comments or anything. Bipul, thank you very much, and uh, we take your leave, sir. Thank you. Bye bye.